Monte Carlo, one of the most expensive pieces of real estate in Europe. So it's an appropriate location to stage one of the most expensive activities in the world of sport, a Grand Prix. It will cost a team at least 10 million pounds a year just to take part in the Formula One World Championship. To be successful will cost three or four times that. Everything to do with Formula One has a large price tag. A set of tires costs 1,300 pounds. 100,000 pounds for an engine. Three quarters of a million to build a car. And that's before you count the cost of the drivers. To pay this massive bill, motor racing has turned itself into one gigantic billboard. The name of the game is a name on the car. In Formula One, sponsorship rules. Down the years, McLaren's marketing arm has found and indeed kept a group of major companies to sponsor its team. We tend not to call them sponsors because that insinuates um, an act, a gratuitous act almost, a charitable act. We see them as partners or investors. They're making an investment. We believe we can deliver a significant return on that investment. Very interesting our contrast with Senna sitting quietly removed from the world of his car. Every driver is, um, has his own little way of getting in the car. Gerhard, our driver last year, would just get out of the car straight away and sit over by the wall. Or the... Do, the others, do the others know that he hasn't got into his car yet? What's the... No, they, they wouldn't know, but I mean, they, they really are doing their own thing. I mean, you saw the way the engine was looking. I mean, nobody else exists. McLaren has a different way of selling Formula One. We do not sell it on the basis of what it costs to run a team. Uh, to a degree, that is irrelevant to Courtaulds or whoever. They are not buying two cars, 220 personnel. What they are buying is global media exposure. We know, for instance, that each race is watched by 502 million people around the globe. That represents one in 10 of the world's population. We know that last year the Formula One World Championship got in excess of 7,000 hours of Formula One coverage. We know that McLaren got 25.4% share of that exposure. Sponsors are notoriously coy about how much they spend. But McLaren know what they expect to earn from the available spaces on the car. Their asking price to put a company name on the unsold space of this front wing would be around $5 million. What does a sponsor get for such money? What I think we get out of it is identifying portals with high technology, internationalism, advanced products, and winning. Both our customers and our employees. 80% of our customers are outside the UK. Some 45 to 50% of our employees are outside the UK. Those people need to see Cordals as something that is at the leading edge and worth being part of. This is a game that attracts a lot of attention all the world over, and it's identified as high tech. This is where I want Cordals to be. We've now been involved in this for some 50-odd years, and we're in it primarily for two reasons. Firstly, it enables us to put our brand in front of a very large international audience. And secondly, it enables us to provide our operating companies with uh, communication stories that they can use in their advertising programs. We can, uh, we can talk to something approaching half a billion people 16 times a year. So that's a huge international audience where we can try and um, in increase the awareness of our brand. Tobacco companies sponsor all the top teams. It's advertising that escapes government health warnings. Tobacco's involvement with this glamorous sport is increasingly under fire. Critics say it sends a subconscious message to the viewer. This year, tobacco advertising was banned or restricted at three races. How does Ron Dennis, a non-smoker, justify such sponsorship? We are promoting a brand name. We're not promoting an act. If you choose to do something, uh, whatever it is, skydive, uh, drive a racing car, um, go skiing, 
drive without a seat belt, all these things, I mean, they're legal uh, in most places and uh, they constitute a simple human value, which is you are free to do what you want. And I think that's right. If people uh, really genuinely feel that exposure to a brand name has some influence on them, then don't watch. Well, they have a choice. You know, turn the television off. I mean, uh, I think that uh, I think that by and large, people are watching the spectacle of the sport, and uh, that's what they're enjoying. With sponsors' money so crucial to the survival of the team, McLaren lavishes a lot of time and money looking after them. On average, they will entertain 300 guests at a Grand Prix and offer them what they call the Formula One experience. Monaco is probably the most difficult uh, place to get any, any guests so we're just, or anybody else, team members for that matter. So we're going to try and make your day a little easier by getting this boat across. It's a simple two or three minute journey. You get off at the back of the Grand Sand as we did this morning. Great. The most important thing we try to do for the guests when they come to the Grand Prix is basically trying to get them as close as possible to the action and as close as possible they can be to the team. A lot of people can go to a corporate event on their own, but we're trying to make them feel an integral part of the team and to make them part of the McLaren experience, as it were, to really capitalise on their involvement with the team. Is that close enough for you? Oh, my God. Former racing driver Jonathan Palmer is the expert on hand. They're going to be coming down the chicane, down out of that tunnel there. They're going to be hard on the brakes. They're going to be going down. They're going to be coming out of that tunnel at 170 miles an hour. They're going to be hard on the brakes as they come down the hill, right down to first gear, and then left and then right, and then accelerating hard, first gear, second, third, fourth. They go through that corner at probably about 120 miles an hour. one of the fastest corners on the circuit, and uh, to give you an idea of the acceleration of these things, they'll be, you can actually time it, but they'll be doing naught, I mean, like 30, no, 30 miles an hour to 140 in about six seconds, something like that down there. There's an awful lot of competition out there, a lot of competition in the pit lane. Um, we're going to make sure that we're one step ahead of the opposition, uh, and that's the reason, I think, that the return on investment is perhaps better with us, we like to think so, than with any other competitive team. The competition is just as keen between races. Back at McLaren's Woking headquarters, marketing chief Ekram Sami has a potential sponsor in his sights. He's keen to clinch a deal before the British Grand Prix. I've done it. Yes? Good. Very warm welcome to McLaren. Very nice. Day. We've got some guests of ours from the Baluki Company, which is a leading Italian maker of sparkling wines. Uh, the chairman of that company is here, Franco Zigliani, and his other members of the organization. And the objective is to take Baluki the next step. They're currently an associate sponsor. That means effectively that we use their sparkling wine products in our VIP hospitality all over the world. They are also a contributor financially. And our objective is to try and take them the next step, and they go into really fairly serious financial contribution. On the factory floor, there is another challenge. So far this season, the cars have lacked speed. So for this weekend's British Grand Prix at Silverstone, the team are fitting a newer and more powerful version of their Ford Cosworth engine. It's talking every time, it's just yeah. not getting the flow. Yeah. Right. Well, it's calling for the correct injection. Uh, the right. uh, same uh, injection time as all the others. So, um, first, let's have, the, let's have the boot off and have a look inside the terminal. There is a series eight. Norman Howell is McLaren's press and PR man. And it is. As he gets the latest briefing on the engine from Ron Dennis, he knows what his challenge is this weekend. What Bennett have been saying, and parts of Ford have been saying, is that yes, we would get the air valve engines at Silverstone, but they would get that extra spec. And yes, that well, press release went around last week, mm -hmm. as you know. One of Norman's jobs is to get the team noticed. The if the cars are winning, that isn't too difficult. But even with the new engine, the cars won't be as fast as the Williams. So at Silverstone, 
Norman is planning an unusual initiative to get additional media attention. Ekram's team is equally determined to get the attention of their Italian guests. They're uh, just changing the nose over now so we can show the um, uh, Baluki um, people how the car will appear with their identity on the car. And we're doing it right now whilst they're going around the factory. All I can say is no way that I can say to you, Malcolm, we can do a one-to-one -one mail on Sunday, you know, Malcolm Folly, over at the centre before Silverstone. I doubt if we can do it there. If you can grab him, that's great. But I'm still not in a position to say I can deliver Senna. Yes, it's good. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice definitive logo and I think it stands out well. Yeah, I think you'll see, I think you'll see for yourselves the reaction will be very positive. Small surprise for you. Yes. <laughs> Silverstone, the British Grand Prix. Here, tobacco sponsorship on television is banned. McLaren gets to promote its own name. This weekend's marketing initiative will be used to help Manchester's bid for the Olympic Games. What we've got set up so far is that uh, Manchester 2000 have agreed to appear on our front wing. We have Sally Gunnell, where well, we're chasing Kenneth Clark, Chancellor of Exchequer. We know he's coming anyway. We know the government has backed this bid by Manchester, so it's only right that we should go for him, and hopefully only right for them to support us. Meanwhile, Ekram's bid to win over Baluki is reaching its climax. The would-be sponsors have been driven up to Silverstone to meet Ron Dennis. We've, we've had a good discussion in the car coming up, and uh, really we need to just discuss with you the, the kind of terms that we've uh, agreed in principle. Ekram's sales pitch has worked. On the way up, he clinched the deal. It's almost like... Uh... Ekram and Norman would like to get as much exposure for the it's team as they picture, can, but competition for coverage right, is so fierce. The rain man again, positioning him as the rain man. Eh? Senna needs worse to the weather if he's up to a cent in the order. But that's nice, eh? You see, what our problem still is we're not, we're not thought of as a British team. Yeah. Lotus are thought of as a British team, obviously. Yeah. Williams are, but not, but mainly because of Mansell. Not it's Damon, but, but, but Nigel Mansell. And, and we're not. You know, we are, we are, we know, we're something else. We're yeah. some sort of international hybrid. Maybe this weekend's uh, run with the Olympic well, logos exactly. will change. This is a way of doing it, you know. have spoken to the Manchester 2000 bid people and we're carrying their logos on our car this weekend. Now, obviously, we would like to enhance it as much as possible. And um, through our own contacts, we heard that the Chancellor might be coming uh, and is coming, in fact, apparently. So we would like, if at all possible, to have his support for this initiative. The surest way to get your team noticed is to win. But in recent races, McLaren's lack of speed has made this less likely. So the press will be interested to know if the new Cosworth engine has improved the car's performance. Norman finds out from the drivers. Any problem with, uh, what about the engine? Doesn't feel any difference. It's no good, I mean, same. <laughs> what about the engine, does it feel different? Yeah, of course it feels different. Drives more, and uh, I think I have a little bit more mid-range. Silverstone, from the latest circuits we've been running, is is a real circuit for for a racing car. Mm. And um, I think if we didn't have the engine, we would be even further behind. So not not fantastic news, but as good as we can as good as we I can do. Could have been a lot worse. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Business is business. Business is business. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, Franco, you could sign here. Yeah. Yeah. Four and 
first of many. <laughs> this is the one no, we put some more warts on. <laughs> Thank you very much. Welcome Thank to you. McLaren. Meanwhile, it's business as usual on the track. George, what they've done with Baluki for the um, for the wing mirrors, they had a problem in getting them to the right, in getting them to the size and printing them out right. on the sticker machine and cutting them out. Right. So what they've effectively done is given us transfers. Okay, one wheel JH in. Right. And uh, and we'll get the approval, and then from that moment we can go. Okay. Last night the final decals were made for two positions, one which is the rear the rear view mirrors on the car, the other is an alternative nose position. For the rear view mirrors, we don't hold the rights to that positioning on the car at present. So the process that we have to go through is a very clearly defined process. Put them on the car at the moment. Ron, then as our managing director, needs to sign them off. If he's happy with that and the balance of the of the branding then we will get some senior uh, representative from Philip Morris to give us a stamp of approval on them, and then we're up and running. Hello, Malcolm. Norman Howe. What also happening tomorrow is that there will be royals here. Um, there's also um, the possibility, and I don't know if it would interest the Chancellor, that we will have um, road car here, McLaren's road car, which is still in a prototype stage. And we will put a Manchester 2000 uh, stickers and logos on it. And we were wondering if uh, the chance that we'd be interested in doing a lap of Silverstone uh, in the car uh, with, with a driver, obviously. Ex-IndyCar champion Michael Andretti has been an added problem for the team image. In his first eight races in Formula One, he has crashed out four times. But because he has often tested the car here, at least he's familiar with this circuit. Michael's performance is not very encouraging. Team manager Dave Ryan is far from happy with this latest practice. If you've looked at the times this morning, you'll see how slow we are. And we're, oh, I think we're 8th and 19th or something on the grid at the moment, which is unbelievably slow. Um, I wouldn't say it was the engine. I think we've uh, taken a serious step backwards on the car at the moment. You know we have Sally, Sally Gunnell coming, the Olympic gold medal winner, to help us in Manchester 2000 with her husband. Obviously, we promised him VIP treatment. Kenneth Clark, the situation with him is um, they don't know where he was an hour ago, this was. But basically, they think he's sleeping, he's just lying. Well, it doesn't matter, just, yeah, just, just I'm letting it so it does happen. In the event, McLaren's drivers end up fourth and 11th on the grid so they will be hard-pressed to get into the points. For the men charged with projecting the team image, tomorrow is going to be uphill work. At midday, we will unveil the Master 2000 logos in the front wing of the car. Depending on how we're positioned, we'd like it to be as near as possible to the front of the car, maybe you know, half leaning down or something like that. So the, the picture has you and the Manta 2000 logo. Next stop, to get former world champion Jackie Stewart on side. Two things, I would like, A, your help, yep. which means possibly standing near our car at some stage and everything. Yeah. Okay, I mean, that, that's what I'm yeah. putting it to yeah. you. B, um, is it possible that if you're taking some rolls round, yeah. you could also take them to our pits? This is, you you know, are be doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Which role is it? Is, uh, it, is it Michael? No. It's higher than that. I know. Everyone I says can't it. tell you where it is because it's security, because one of them is okay. easy, but the other two are difficult. Right. The thing is that we were caught out by Lady Di. We'd like to give some presents, some program. The kids are coming around too, aren't they? Yeah, but that's a bad time to do it. It's better to get them over here because they're going from there somewhere else. Good afternoon, everyone. As you know, it's uh, British Grand Prix is the uh, busiest Grand Prix. We have, uh, 150 guests here. The people over in the uh, 
a lot of people in the, in the pits supporting the cars, the Grand Prix team, obviously, 50, 55 people. And of course, the most uh, essential ingredient, uh, the drivers. One of the drivers here, Ayrton Senna, well known to you. Uh, just like to pass you over to Ayrton. It's an unrehearsed quick visit. Can you hear me? Yes, he's on the line. Do you have any idea where Senegal is? Because we've only got about five minutes left with the car, because then they're going to start working on the T-car. Ah, here we are. Sally, can I introduce Hi, you to Mika Hakkinen? Hi, nice to meet you. Hello. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah, yeah brilliant. We've done that before. Ah. It's very heavy. Really heavy. Okay, yeah. We're uh, coming a little bit fine. Okay. Um, have we got a final decision? Yeah, on this? we've just had the go yeah. ahead. Yes. Yeah? Okay. Oh, good. Everything's good. A little bit pressured, one hour to go before the start of the race. Just got the OK on the Baluki decals, and so they are being applied to the car, as you can see. Uh, on the Manchester initiative, I think we got some good visibility from this morning. Uh, missed out on the Royals, unfortunately, but another opportunity perhaps to catch them out on the grid. It's less than an hour before the start of the British Grand Prix. McLaren's hopes of getting a result, with all the favourable publicity that will bring, depend to a large extent on this man, Ayrton Senna. What the public doesn't realise is that his contract has only just been signed. start is minutes away. McLaren's marketing arm is still working hard to promote its team. Norman Howell has one more card to play. So, so Norman Howell, Director of Communications at McLaren. We've got a message through to your office. We're oh, running yes. the Manchester 2000 uh, okay, right, car. Okay, right, sure. And we would love just a few seconds. We have Sally Gunnell here who's supporting. Okay. I was wondering if we could have you. Okay, where do you want me? Uh, here. Okay. Okay. Now, what is so? What do you want me to do? Just, just stand by. Now, how do you get me and the logo on the same shot? Do you want me to crouch down by it? All right. Right, mission accomplished. Now it's it. Hopes are high in the pits for a successful start, but for Andretti, they are soon dashed. There will be a press release at the end of the race, so Norman needs to know what happened. They all went wide and I had to go wide, and I got the, the loose stop. The button, or had the engine uh, stopped? It's in, it was, it was in enough that there was no way. But it was sorry, I mean, I just, a nice start. I thought we were really looking good. Somebody I mean, I no. Nobody's fault. 
While Senna continues to fight it out on the track, the team is in with a chance. After some early dueling at the front, Senna settles down among the leading cars. Then on the last lap, with at least a third place assured, disaster strikes. Senna's car slows down and stops. For both drivers, the race is over, but not for the marketing team. In fact, for Norman, the hardest part is still to come. He must face the press. First, he needs to find out what happened to Senna's car. What happened? Yes. No. Petrol. Good job. It's a fuel pressure. It's what seems like a yeah, fuel pressure. Yeah, the fuel pressure, pressure dropped just before he stopped. It seems a programming error caused the problem. I tend to suggest that the cars run out of fuel. And so to the last task of the day, the press release. It's time to find the silver lining in an otherwise gloomy day. After all, at McLaren, you never lose. You just don't always win. We wanted to push Manchester 2000. We managed to get that across. We had the new sponsor in Berlucci, Italian wine makers, and we were in the car. We've tried a new engine. It works. We've got Senna on board. As you know, this was the weekend when he really signed. Oh, I don't think it's negative, I and mean, this is a team that, as you can see, already is calm. Nobody's holding their heads down, shame and horror. From a business standpoint, actually a very successful day. Uh, we were entertaining a huge number of people in our VIP area today, over 250 people, and that's the opportunity for our partners to capitalise on this opportunity. Um, that aside, the Baluki logos did go on the car, in fact, prior to the race. That was another success story, in a sense. Ken Clark did come on the grid. We managed to get him there with Sally Gunnell, uh, endorsing the Manchester 2000 bid. And uh, all in all, I think from a marketing side, actually a fairly, uh, a fairly positive day.